topic for the day is you can win if you want. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Cindy Lim, our organizing chair lady. Oh, Mr. Hyung. <laughs> All right. Uh, distinguished speakers, group sales managers, unit sales managers, fellow agents, ladies, and a few young, good looking gentlemen here with us today. It gives me great pleasure and honor to be speaking at this second ladies' convention encompassing our theme, Strategic Women in the K Economy. Can I begin with a question? You know, you've, I think this group um, consists of a lot of uh, new agents and perhaps with, with more experience. Have you really thought what brings you into this career? What actually motivates you? The money, the pursuit, the education, or something? Or actually, what motivates you to come into this seminar today? Were you forced, cajoled, tricked? And I believe some of you were forced, were being dragged by me. <laughs> okay, give yourself a minute to think about it because this could actually set you back to basic, back to your very basic why you chose life insurance as your career. And definitely you achieve your dreams. This actually brings back memories as to why I have decided life insurance as my career way back in 1995. Briefly, as Anna has said, prior to being a life insurance agent, I was attached to an oil and gas company earning a fixed income. Being an ambitious person, I felt confined. I also wanted to pursue further education. I wanted to do my MBA. And I had chosen in, um, to do it with University of Strathclyde. All right. It cost me about 30,000 back then in 1994, 1995. Can you hear me? All right. OK, thank you. I wanted to pursue further education. I wanted to do an MBA very badly. All right. And I had chosen that university to, to study. It cost me about 30000 way back in 1994-1995. Yes, I have money, but I didn't want to dig into my own pocket. So what I did was, I went out to look elsewhere to supplement additional income to, in order to pursue my studies. I didn't want a loan, I didn't want to be in debt. So I went out to look for additional income. Hence, I came into this industry and I was financially able to pursue further education to develop my knowledge and skills. Instead of this MBA, I had now acquired various other credentials. I am now a qualified chartered financial consultant, a chartered life underwriter, a certified financial planner, a registered financial consultant, and yes, I will very own registered financial planner. Thank you. That burning desire to have this MBA, it's still in me. It's still sparks there. What I vow here today, I will complete my Masters of Financial Planning in the next two to three years. <laughs> my pursuit to continue my learning and develop knowledge in this industry can be defined 
as my first step in my strategic move as a woman in the care economy. Yes. <laughs> One of the things that helped me improve and provides me with constant motivation, I must say, is my role as a wife and a mother, a woman who has dependents, my children. Therefore, they need me for emotional support and nurture them as what all mothers are looked upon for. I also needed to be in control of my time of when I worked and when I didn't. It was important for me to be able to be there to attend my children's school programs. This career with Grace and Life Assurance has given me both the financial independence and more importantly, the freedom to be a career woman and a good mom. And I'm determined And I'm determined to do well and in what I and many of you out there vouch to be the greatest career in the world. It is noble. Our mission as insurance agents is to bring comfort and financial relief to the widows, the fatherless children, and other dependents in this country. Just imagine, should disability occur, or should we die too young? Sometimes it can be fortunate or unfortunate that you may live too long. Life insurance is guaranteed to replace your income. One of the most gratifying things about this business is knowing a family is better off financially than when they first met me. I know each time I deliver a death claim check, even a check for a small amount, I have helped to keep that family to stay in their home, keep their kids in college, and they remain financially afloat. You can't put a price tag on what an insurance agent brings to a family's life. A widower whose wife was stabbed to death six months after her policy came in force. He told me, Miss Heng, I know you will take care of us. You are more than our agent. You are a family friend. I don't know what we would have done if you had not given us the policy. You see, I should have been consoling him, but instead he was saying all those nice things to me. It really made me feel good that I had chosen the greatest career, that we are in the greatest career. Do you agree with me? Yeah. I'm sorry I didn't hear you. Are we in the greatest career? Yeah. Of course we are. The check that I delivered to him has helped to keep his son in college. His daughter was so convinced about this industry that she is now a life insurance agent with us in Great Eastern Life Assurance. <laughs> with every policy so, the future is purchased by the present. Life insurance is never bad. Life insurance is not for the dead. It's for those who are left behind. Would you like to know who are my teammates? What do I do every day? Who I bring to work every day? Say yes! yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you can win if you want. If you want, you can really win. I chose this title I pluck out from the song sung by Modern Talking. The chorus, it's, it's really meaningful and it reads like this. You can win if you want. If you want it, you will win. If you really want it, you must want it really, really badly. On your way, you will see life is more than fantasy. Really, if you want to grow up, really, if you want to grow up, you want more further, further education. Life insurance is one industry where you can capture all. Take my hands, follow me. You've got a brand new friend in your life. Don't just take my hand. Your clients, the person who brought you into this industry, your USM, your GSM, take their hands. I'm sure they brought you in, they will lead you to success. Right? You can really win some. I have eight soulmates here, things that I do every day. You can really win some by using some of my soulmates. One, my soulmate number one has to do with motto. Okay. I call them soulmate because it's, it's in me, it's in my blood. Life insurance, like my senior GSM, Mrs. Fu said, Bangun Pagi, Baruskigi, then is life insurance. 
<laughs> okay. Start off with a very good motto for yourself and for your agency. In our agency, it reads like this, and I wrote it. Our people are different because we get excited about helping people understand life insurance. We are people helping people. Our people are different because we get excited about helping people understand life insurance. We are people helping people. Say this with conviction. Say this with great belief, and I'm sure you will do well in this industry. Two, the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune is actually, in simple language, is our sales process. But it sounds better, right? <laughs> I believe that in our business, a call, whether over a telephone or a face-to-face -face call, will set this Wheel of Fortune turning. With, um, turning, you're right. Prospect. Prospect a lot. Prospecting is nothing more than the law of averages. You see, um, way back in 1996, I remember grabbing this chance to attend a dinner on my sister's behalf. It wasn't the food that I wanted. It wasn't the dinner. All I wanted was to meet people. This has actually resulted in meeting one of my most important prospects, a businessman. He has increased his policy with us in Great Eastern Life by leaps and bounds. And actually, he increased his policy every year. He just likes to do that. <laughs> and he is today my very important center of influence. See, a call like this will lead to an appointment, then a presentation, and finally a close. And service will keep your clients with you. This system has helped me to keep to my daily schedule, daily. Remember, it's daily. <laughs> and eventually to my MDRT qualification continuously for the last six years. Yes. The introduction was supposed like I'm supposed to finish my seven, but yes, I have completed my seventh year MDRT as well. My soulmate number three has to do with cases. I also believe that if you want to close cases, you must be committed and you must be focused on your goals. Hence, we use the acronym CASES. C is for commitment to calls. I know all of us want to make calls, but it's just a telling call. Did you make the commitment of, you know, you just want to call or somebody, my GSM told me to call, but you must commit to call, not commit or call. It's, it's two different meanings if you put it in a sentence, right? A for activities, right? Back to the prospecting daily activities. As for the notes systems you use daily. And E, E stands for enthusiasm. I like this really, really well. And do, do you want to know how does the top producer close cases? What's their secret? Yes. <laughs> Would you want to know how does the top producers close cases? Yes. It's actually basically enthusiasm. It's energy, ask Sharon, ask Miss Heng, ask Mariana. It's energy, it's energy transferring to your clients and this motivates them to sign all the forms that you want them to sign, you see. And how do they release tension? If we've got punching bags, no? our spouses? <laughs> no, no, we don't, it's just a joke. What we do is we go out and make ourselves busier, okay? Enthusiasm is contagious. Check yours every morning before you leave home. It's important. S is service. Services to your clients. When you spin your wheel of fortune, it rotates to an appointment, into presentation, thereafter to cases. And it doesn't stop there. You've got to continue spinning it with service. Good service to your clients. Because if they are satisfied, you get lots of referrals. And that's the saying, when your clients are satisfied, everything else falls into place. I may, be, I may be carrying a lot of credentials, or some of you may be out there calling yourself as financial consultant, financial planner, or whatsoever, all right? But you still got to go back to basic, to spin the wheel of fortune, because you got to look for prospects. You got to present your, present your case, service, and monitor the plans. It's the same thing. You've got to get the wheel of fortune correct, okay? My soulmate number four has to do with education. Equally important is the knowledge as what this convention team suggests. Education touches me very deeply. 
perhaps I was deprived when I was younger. <laughs> so I try to get as much education I can out there. The courses I've completed, the knowledge I've acquired has helped me tremendously in being professional in my job. I can relate to people from all walks of life, be it a housewife, a businessman, a professional, a doctor or a lawyer. Okay? As our beloved Prime Minister said, the success of its nation is dependent greatly in the literacy of its people. And I say, the success of Great Eastern Life Assurance is dependent on the literacy of its agency force. If Mr. Fong is around, <laughs> if Mr. Fong is around, I'm sure he agrees. Yeah. I can cover simple issues on life insurance. We usually start off with, what's your budget? 100, 200 or whatever, right? I can cover that. Simple issues on life insurance, a whole presentation that covers issues of wealth accumulation, wealth preservation, and wealth distribution. On Tuesday, yeah, just this few days ago, I presented a case to a board of directors for a group of companies covering various issues on business insurance, a business continuation plan, a partnership insurance, and three key main policies. The total worth of this business is 500,000 in premiums. You see, with knowledge and with credentials, you have confidence. But more importantly, your clients respect you. They have the greatest confidence in your presentation. Another client of mine, whom I, which I think I should finalize this, this weekend, if he comes back from Singapore, he said, Miss Heng, I'll give you 100,000 a year. For the next 12 years, you plan for me education protection and investments. For the next 12 years, it's because he's 43 and everybody assumed that they'll retire at age 55. <laughs> Not necessary though. So what would you do? You see, that is 100,000 here and it got, it got to go to education. Protection and investment. All right. So you've got to have a lot of knowledge within your fingertips because how do you plan this? Okay, the other, mind, the other thing that you should juggle is because his daughters are 9 and 11. How do you give education at this time? <laughs> All right, when he said protection, well, no problem because um, insurance, he, he hasn't very much yet. So our Supreme Living Care and Super Life, go sell it. It's, it's a real good plan before they removed it. Okay, investment. Why he touched on investment? Why? And he said for the next 12 years, it's for retirement. Right. And when you say education, do you just bump in an endowment plan to, for him? Or when he say investment, do you just give him the, the uh, investment link? You've got to know what's available in the market. It's knowledge. Even, even um, what happened here, you gave him a menu, what to choose, all right? But you guide him back to what you want him to choose. Guide him back, all right? You get what I mean? All right. You see, when you arrive at a certain stage, you've got to improve yourself because the level of trust with your clients is different. Okay. Like Thomas Edison said, from the neck down, a man is worth a couple of dollars. From the neck up, he is worth anything his brain can think about. Financial professionals are paid for what they do with what we know. Therefore, I will recommend you to read Read a lot on your industry or anything else that can relate you to your business, hobbies, and current issues. Sometimes even health issues because people are so health conscious nowadays, right? Reading is exercise to your brain like physical exercise to your body. And remember this, no matter how much you read, your brain won't get fat. <laughs> Five, IT tools, and I think Mr. Hyung should be here. This is his forte. 
ICT tools. We've got to get ourselves equipped and up to date with technology because it's here to stay. That is the reason for the birth of Cyberjaya and the Multimedia University. You can actually capitalize on this ICT to reach out fast and constantly to, to your clients. Keep abreast with these ICT tools, be it you know, simple things like emails, SMS, you can even do your MMS, you know, with pictures nowadays, PDAs, and whatever you can get your hands on. Our agent and agency empowerment tools like Great Link, Phone Link, whatever link they want us to link up to, link it to. All right, because, because you can reach your goals faster in shorter time. Send a joke, send a proverb to your client or your friend. This will perk them up with in, uh, every day. Okay. You can prospect and keep in touch with your clients via emails or SMS okay, or video conferencing. I remember keeping in touch with this client of mine. He's gone to UK for, to further his MBA. We communicated through emails see what is suitable for him. He came back during the summer holidays, um, that's July, and uh, he signed on the application. That was it. Another young doctor, this was a referral, okay. Um, working in Singapore GH, we also communicated through emails and discussed some suitable plans for him. He came back during Chinese New Year to sign it on, see. Services are easier and faster through emails. Life is great. Great link and lifeisgreat.com. One of my agents, he's good. He uses lifeisgreat.com and close many cases. Okay, learn, learn from him. Your policyholder can access to and retrieve information at a click of a mouse. If you don't serve them well, they can serve the net themselves through our website. Okay. Also, please note that IT is fast and effective, but it takes the human touch and personal relationship and time to build that friendship. Cherish that with your clients. It's important, okay? ICT cannot take over that. <laughs> six, my soulmate number six, has to do with balanced life. Jeffrey Moss once said, unless you lead a balanced life, you won't be good in business. The MDRT convention serves to confirm this philosophy of leading a balanced life that covers six areas in our life, things like family, career, health, education, financial, and spiritual. This whole person concept has to do with achieving balance in all aspects of our, our life, and we've got to develop our full human potential. Live a balanced life. You'll be a happier person. You'll achieve more. I don't think you've heard of this proverb. The face that you have at 25 is a gift, but the face that you have at 50, you deserve. <laughs> So choose. Seven, soulmate. It's attitude. Attitude is important. It is the positive for our actions, feelings, and moods. And it is these actions, feelings, and moods that determine the way we live and how our life turns out to be. Like Chuck Swindoll said, this is a whole mouthful or, uh, to read or to memorize. The longer I live, the more I realize the impact of attitude on life. It is more important than the past, than education, than money, than circumstances, than failures, than success, than what other people may think, say, or do. It is more important than appearance, giftedness, or skill. It will break a company, a person, or a home. But the most remarkable thing is, the most remarkable thing is because we have a choice. We have a choice to choose a great attitude. Choose yours correctly from day one. It's important. For those who are doing recruitment, or if I think most of us have gone through employment sometime in our life, you see, what do they look for? They, they, want, they want to hire attitude and train skill. It's important, right? For those who are recruiting, we want to hire attitude and we train skill. A right attitude influences, right atmosphere enables right responses. The other aspects of attitude that I would like to share is an attitude of gratitude. I would like to thank my group sales manager, Mr. Casey Tan. He, he can't be here today, he can't fit into my skirt. <laughs> I don't think he's allowed, right? <laughs> okay, um, it was him who showed me the way to life insurance. And uh, yeah, I really thank him. Okay. 
I would also like to thank my senior group sales manager, Mr. and Mrs. Fu Hon Ling. They have given me all the guidance, or else I would not have achieved my GSM status in five years, in a short five years. I really thank them for all their tender loving care. And the most important person whom I wish to thank is usually known as my husband, but he wants to be known as my significant others now. <laughs> He's been very supportive, patient all these years. He takes good care of our children. You, you saw the earlier slide by Ethan Hill. 35% of men likes to share time with the kids, so he's one of the 35%. <laughs> and he helps run the, run the agency. He's a good companion. Um, he's blushing already, I know. <laughs> okay. Nothing works without a great company to represent. So my last soulmate has to do is great in life assurance. With all the soulmates, with all that I mentioned above, it has to be backed by a great company. The greatest moment in my career was not just achieving MDRT, but the choice, the choice to join Great Eastern Life Assurance. It was a leap of faith and a challenging proposition, but it's been everything I have expected. I also believe my success is attributed to many factors, including the company's track record of stability and financial strength. Great Eastern Life Assurance has consistently maintained top position in most areas. And I think some of you will not have some of these figures here because it's the latest figures. I got it from our marketing department. Okay, next. If Mr. Alex Fong is here, I know we, sh we can commit that we will achieve that 30% that he wanted, right? Yes. <laughs> In summarizing, let me share with you what I've learned and also discovered over the short eight and a half years that I've been with Great Eastern Life. Okay, the N and the P. And would you know what's the N and the P? I, I need some audience participation here though. Wow, that's fast. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. The negative and the... Oh, sorry. I thought I want the negative to be in red. The negative and positive. Do, do you know that there, there are a lot of naysayers out there, naysayers, negative people? Have you thought about this? And that most negative words starts with the letter N, and most positive words starts with the letter P. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Now, I need some, some words. I need some audience participation. Could you give me some negative words that starts with N? No. no. <laughs> no, all right. None. <laughs> this side. Never. None. No. <laughs> Forgive her. She's just a teenager, <laughs> and she's exploring to be a woman. <laughs> nee. Yeah. <laughs> Nonsense. All right, no one sense. What else? No way. What about this side? Why are you so quiet? Nothing. Not yet. Not yet. <laughs> nothing. Okay. Hey, nothing could be good, no? Like uh, Jiulo say, sasateng ngong ngong. You can get trains. Okay. Nanti. Oh, okay, okay, nanti. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Nobody, nobody, right? No way is here. Okay, I've got some of the words in N. Now I need some positive words. Put your thinking hand. 
put your thinking hat on. What are the positive words that starts with P? Besides positive. <laughs> <laughs> Wang Ji, I'm going to throw you out from this home. <laughs> Alright. Policies! No? <laughs> okay. Yes, it is. Policies is positive. It is the sincerest love letter that's ever written. Okay, right? What else? Positive, yes. Patient. Profit. Passion. Praise. <laughs> yeah, it's important. It is important. Yes, yes. Production. <laughs> Protection. Possess. Possess. Okay, presentation. All right. I'm going to work out the whole crowd now. <laughs> All right, so you've got a range of negative and positive words, right? Pleasure. <laughs> okay. Oh. Perseverance. There are an awful lot of negatives out there today. You agree? Yes. Okay. There are people who tell you, oh, the economy is bad. We've got no money. I've got no job. The next bank merger is coming. You know, during the SARS, did you hear? My tourist guy became a Nazi mart seller at, in Jalan Imbi. Yeah, <laughs> okay, it's bad, it's dangerous. You must guard against all this. You must have a vision for the future. Because if you do not have a vision for the future, for yourself, you will get bogged down by all these negatives. Yes, I'm sure some of you may be thinking, hey, what about the bad days? I know. I know what it feels like when things don't turn out as you planned. You are having a tough day in a tough week, especially when you say you don't have prospects to see, right? When you don't have any cases to close. You are falling behind your qualifications for Turkey and Taiwan. You are not feeling very good about yourself. And when you go home, you talk to your spouse, you talk to your mentor. You call him over the phone and you say, No, I'm never going to be able to make it to the max next level. The bottom line is simply this. Nothing I learned at the second ladies convention is working at all. I am an N type of person. Not anything I learned is workable. I can't use the computer. I am a nobody. I really thought I had all this figured out, but none of this stuff is applicable. There is absolutely no way that I am going to move up. Now, I don't want to be negative, but there is no way, no way that I'm going to make it to MDRT or MD, MDPC or Supermacy Award. So I will tell you this, as far as I'm concerned, everything I learn here sucks and it's simply nonsense. Right? Does it sound like you sometimes? Do, do you see this self-prophecy doom? Say yes! yes. <laughs> Listen to the USM and the GSM. I think they, they get a lot of this from the agents sometimes. Okay. How do we encounter this? How do we overcome this? This is why we need each other. This is why we need study groups. That is also why we need ladies' convention like this. That is also why we need our spouses, our significant others, our friends in this industry. Because somebody needs to snap up, step up and say, hey, snap out of this. Because positive, prior positive productive people place a pro priority on producing pleasant perceptions. You, you need to get focused on the good things this business does, the lives we save, the dreams we achieve and the difference we make in our clients' lives. So, the next time you get down, remember this simple idea and realize that nobody is perfect. You can't please everyone. But if you really work hard, you will be in a position where you can help yourself and your clients to profit. Price is not the driver. There are a lot of possibilities in the marketplace today. You will make some progress in your production if you really, really work hard on it.
Take a little pride in the fact that you are making a difference in people's lives. We will praise you at the Supermercy Convention because you are a productive individual who really makes it to a difference and we will say a prayer for you as we say a prayer for every audience here. We know you can pursue your future for yourself. You are a real plus in the community. So let us all go out there, make the difference with peace in our hearts and we can all gather here again at the Third Ladies Convention to share our success and to share our achievement. Yes! Are you going to do it? Yes. Thank you. From all that I have shared here with you over the last hour, if you could just take one idea, one positive idea and work on it next week. When you go back, go work on it. Make that call. Make that five presentations a day. Give someone a hug. Tell your family or your friend that you love them. Do it. Thank you. And one more thing. You've heard from my good friends, Sharon Chong, Mariana, and we've got a ra range of good speakers today. Learn, listen, and apply, and your life will never be the same again. Thank you very much, Ms. Heng Li Meng. Will you remain on stage? And now I would like to call upon our organizing chair lady, Ms. Cindy Lim, to give a token of appreciation to Ms. Heng. that I'm going to bring forth. She's no stranger to those who have been in the industry, but for those who do not know her, listen, her credentials, her awards that she has claimed over the last six years. She joined the industry in 1996. Graduated from University of Malaya with a business administration with honors. As I say, she joined Great Eastern in 1996 and she qualified for her MDRT since then. And MDRT was for the last 97, 98, 99, 2000. That means four years consecutively she do her MDRT. And thereafter, she lose sight of MDRT. She goes for Cut of the table. All right? And her subsequent goes are cut off the table. And she qualified since then for the last two years consecutively. She qualified for her cut.